Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. In today's presentation, Anthony Power and I are going to be covering three main topics, the first being the new 30% proposed tax on Bitcoin mining and the energy that goes into that by the Biden administration. Following that, we're going to talk about the Cantor Fitzgerald all-in cost per coin analysis and what that means post having to a lot of these publicly traded miners. And finally, you guys, we wanted to take a quick look at MicroStrategy, specifically their market cap in relation to the number of Bitcoin that they're holding and relate that back to the mining community. Now, before we get into all that, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a huge help to myself, Anthony, and the channel. It helps get this content to other people like you who may find value. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let us know in the comments section below what you think about these issues, if the 30% tax will actually go into legislation and be pushed through, and your outlook post having for the miners. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right, today's video, kind of a variety hour, we're gonna be tackling a couple of the issues or topics that we've been seeing on social media. First and foremost here, Anthony, this is one you and I have both been hearing a lot about, uh, the new proposed tax from the Biden administration on Bitcoin mining. So for those of you who maybe haven't heard about this one or haven't read up on it, uh, this is the exact same proposal that the Biden administration actually put forward last year. It didn't get voted through the House last year. But Anthony, essentially what's going on here is they're looking to tax the energy associated with Bitcoin mining up to 30% over the next three years. So essentially a 10% tax would go in on 2025. That would go up to 20% in 26. And finally in 2027, there'd be the full 30%. So a huge incremental cost to these miners. Obviously electricity and energy is the main input or variable cost. What's your thoughts on this, Anthony? And do you think this is gonna come to fruition or is this a case of uh, fear, uncertainty and doubt going into an election cycle here? Um, so the, the, the tax itself, it's, it's, it's staggered over three years. What you've got to remember is um, the US energy uh, for, uh, you know, infrastructure is probably faltering and needs to be replaced in part. So I'm, I'm assuming that the government are using the opportunity because of what's happening in this space, because of the amount of energy being used, they're using it as a way to say, look, we've got to pay for this infrastructure some way to get it better, to get it more um, more reliable than it is at the moment. You know, we, you hear in certain states the power going down. So I can sort of hear on the side of the government, but then it's like they're attacking Bitcoin mining. Are they attacking the other industries? Are they going after the battery providers, the car manufacturers, all those other industries that use a lot of power? If it's if it's you know if it's if it's just for attacking you know crypto and they don't like the fact that you know it's it's power, but actually most of what we know is renewable power, then the, the argument doesn't stand up. But if it was, a, if it was a, against all industries to try and raise money to pay for a, a renewed infrastructure throughout the North America, then, you know, part of me sort of like would have some sort of like understanding what they're trying to do. Um, but I haven't, I haven't looked through the full details of what they propose. I've seen the updates come out in terms of like, you know, messages through social media, and the same 30 percent but as you've articulated it's it's a it's an actual staggered increase to get to 30 percent and this goes on in other countries as well so even in like the uk and other countries like that you know when there is a requirement to upgrade uh, infrastructure whether it be electricity in the uk at the moment we're paying significantly more through our, wa our water bills our utility bills to make sure that infrastructure for that is in a better place than it is at the moment so you know, when these things happen, it's generally taxpayers who um, who end up footing the bill. And so, you know, I need to see more details about this. But if they're picking on the uh, crypto world, I'm sure now with the amount of people that are, you know, invested or stakeholders in this sort of like um, in this space, um, these are voters as well at the same time. That was going to be the, th the three things that stand out to me here, Anthony. Number one, we're going into an election year. Trump has already come out opposing a CBDC, uh, talking about some of the benefits of crypto. Obviously, we've heard from a number of candidates that they support Bitcoin. The second point, Anthony, you alluded to, they just approved an ETF. We now have all this Wall Street money, big institutions, uh, clients, 
Um, wealth managers, I, I kind of doubt they're now going to take all that air out of this industry. And the third point, as we as we talked about with bit farms there, uh, miners have been banned in countries before, like the ban in China, and all that happens is they just move to another country. So I don't necessarily know when they're, we talk about CleanSpark giving back to the communities and actually supporting the local taxes. I don't know if they necessarily want to poke that bear and, and cause a lot of these companies to look for greener pastures elsewhere. So time will tell. At this point, my gut feeling says it'll probably go the same way as last year's proposal. However, we never know. And uh, the nice thing with this, you guys, is with that staggered increase, keep in mind the bull, the bull cycle, the Bitcoin cycle we're in, right? A lot of people are anticipating 2024, 2025 to be the big peak of this cycle. And then by 25, 26, 27, things may look substantially different. So curious to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below, but we thought we'd address that one. The next one, Anthony, I'll kick it over to you. A very interesting article that came out from Cantor Fitzgerald talking about the all-in cost per coin and the impacts of that post having. Now I'll kick it over to you for this one, Anthony, but interestingly enough, they actually had the Bitcoin price in at 40,000 on this chart. Uh, so substantially stronger than that now, but what was your take on this? And do you think the halving is gonna be manageable for most of these miners uh, based on where they're at right now? So this, this article sort of like came out in January and this table came out in January. And basically, their, their foresight at that point in time when the Bitcoin price was around the 40,000 mark was in the event that the Bitcoin price is at 40,000, how many of the North American public miners would be have difficulty once the halving event incurred? So um, we're literally now, what, five weeks away from the halving? Um, and we know from the date of the halving that the cost to mine a Bitcoin will effectively uh, double as the rewards uh, issued are literally halved overnight. And from their table, they only highlighted two companies that were actually mining um, at that moment in time um, that when if you look to double their um, their cost of mining post post halving, they would still be in profit. Now, with the Bitcoin price today at around sixty eight thousand, all those uh, companies on there would be would be in green. So. You know, the question now is, where does the Bitcoin price go between now and the halving and post the halving? We've never had an all time high before a halving before. So we're in new territory here. We keep going back to the reasons why we're in new territory and we keep mentioning the spot ETF. And so, you know, that impact there that, you know, the billions and billions of dollars that have flooded into this space in the last two months is just unprecedented. And we talked about, you know, when the gold ETF came out, the same amount of inflow took two years to what the crypto world has seen Bitcoin achieve in two months. So we're in a different space now. Nobody expected this level of inflows um, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. I mean, Bitcoin price reached an all time high of 73,000 this week, nearly 74,000. Yes, it's had a little bit of, um, you know, a bit of volatility since then and it went down to 65,000 you know, uh, late yesterday, and now it's back up to 68,000 again. So, you know, we've, we've never, we've never got away from the fact that Bitcoin is a volatile um, um, uh, investment. But when we look at the graph, and look at where we've come the last sort of like 15, 16 months, it's going in one direction. And we know that, you know, even since the start of this year, Bitcoin is, you know, is up higher than, um, you know, all the mining stocks in terms of year to date increase. So it's, you know, it's, it's, between 60 70 percent up since the start of the year and only one miner at the moment is actually um you know is green and that's and that's clean spark and and that's because they increased their you know their hash rate from 10x hash to 16x hash in february so you know when you're going to increase the size of your hash rate by 60 percent that's going to impact the share price no matter what what position the company's in so um but it was just uh, you know it's, it's just interesting there if you look at the graph itself i mean bit deer comes out as the cheapest and people are questioning that now you know it's bit deer but actually people are questioning because they don't really understand i've just put out an article for compass mining this week explaining more about bit deer and also about you know they're not just a self-mining company they've got a number of other businesses they're effectively now the total uh, vertically vertically um integrated mining company you know this year they're going to be producing their own machines for themselves and potentially for the market as well. And bear in mind, you know, BitDeer uh, previously was part of Bitmain. And so, you know, they've got a significant R&D team uh, working on the latest technology 
So, I'll, you know, they've already tested out their miners now and they're coming in just, you know, slightly, um, you know, slightly less than what the, the S21 miner is for Bitmain. So, you know, as a first attempt, as a first generation miner coming out with, I think, a, an efficiency of just over 18 joules of terahash. And bear in mind, you know, the, the Bitmain miners are coming in about 17 and a half. That's, a, that's an amazing feat. And that's the first generation. What's the second generation going to look like? You know, is the second generation going to be significantly higher? And we know that they're not the only ones in the market that are coming to the market. So there are other uh, companies trying to join this market and, um, and take on the challenge of the likes of Bitmain, who are a massive company in comparison, and the likes of MicroBT and the likes of uh, Canaan, who are the established suppliers of mining machines. But by the end of this year, we might have maybe, maybe five or six miners on the market um, providers uh, for, 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 for companies to choose from. So it's, it's an interesting space. But at the moment, the Bitcoin price, 68,000 for these companies, with, with what I'd say really efficient machines, most of them have got already, and most of them are buying even more efficient machines, um, this price should get them through the halving at the moment. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, the less efficient miners will come off as the halving occurs because, you know, these are more efficient miners, those with less efficient miners, those without the energy prices that these companies are paying will have to switch off because it becomes non profitable for them to do that. And therefore, the difficulty comes down. And these miners that are in the space that are mining actually end up getting more uh, Bitcoin um, to mine because the difficulty comes down and there's more available for less miners on the actual on the actual uh, blockchain. So it's, 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 it's for me, it's a positive sign. It just goes to show how two months can change um, a scenario. This came out two months ago, the end of January, and now we're sort of like, um, you know, in the middle of March, and we're looking at a different space in time. Um, but as we know, we don't know what the Bitcoin price is going to be tomorrow or at the halving or next year. So we don't give them sort of like, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, price uh, performances on, on, on that or any of the stocks. Um, but it's an interesting space, Bryce. Yeah, it definitely is. And you're totally right. How things can change in a couple of short months. I want to talk it again, a crazy week here, Anthony. Bitcoin was up the last couple of days. The miners were retreating heavily. Today, I didn't even look at my phone. I just assumed Bitcoin was down overnight. Sure enough, the miners are up. So like you say, your guess is as good as mine. The seal miner though from Bitier does look extremely good in terms of performance. Um, however, like we heard from Ben in that, that great interview, Anthony, uh, if they're getting the T21s at $14, $16 a terahash, Ben was actually saying the T21s could outperform the S21 in a lot of scenarios based on some of the um, the capability that Rake had. It's going to be interesting to see how Bitdeer prices that seal miner because uh, they're they're going to have to undercut to get market share if they plan on selling it to other miners um, or just use it internally. I guess we'll we'll wait and see. Um, interestingly enough, though, I wanted to talk about those inflows into the space, specifically what we're seeing with MicroStrategy. Um, but before I do, Anthony, I know Saluna just came out with uh, some news yesterday talking about their Dorothy 2 project, um, expecting to deliver 14 million potentially in profit. So we just actually had John from Saluna on. He talked about all these various different projects. Uh, I'm not sure where they get the names for these Anthony's ex-girlfriends or something like that, but uh, John said he'd already heard that joke. So why don't we take a look at Saluna quick and then we can talk about MicroStrategy. Yeah, so Saluna announced yesterday that, you know, Project Dorothy 2, and that's a 50 megawatt data center um, situated in Texas, um, you know, close to a wind farm, has now advanced through the ERCOP large flexible load approval process. And what that means, it, it gives them, you know, um, paves the way for them initiating the bidding process and securing some finance for that expansion of that project. Um, it'll accommodate uh, 48 megawatts um, of hosted miners, um, along with two megawatts of specialized um, HPC AI data center uh, named Helix. <clears throat> so we've got Dorothy, we've got Helix, maybe there are a couple, I don't know how it <laughs> works, but um, you know, uh, you know, again, but yeah, but John's emphasized that the company's readiness to accelerate this project, uh, you know, is based on, on successful experience with the uh, project Dorothy's initial phase. So everything's looking good there. You've, you've articulated already that it's due to yield about 14 million additional annualized profits and boasts uh, a, a great return on, on the invested capital. And, you know, one thing we know about uh, Saluna is they, the, the focus they have is on sustainability and, and making sure that they maintain their low carbon footprint. And Project um, 2 is going to be, you know, is going to be doing that for them. 
Um, it's currently in the construction bidding phase, and it's set to advance, you know, uh, you know, imminently. So uh, once the finance, you know, uh, uh, options have, have been considered, but uh, a good update for for Saluna. They are one of the smaller miners. They're, they're um, you know, they they they've got about just over 800 petahash of self-mining and double that amount in hosting mining. And they're starting to look at this HPC space like a number of other miners. But they're certainly worth looking and doing a little bit more due diligence into because, you know, we always hear about the big names, the marathons, the riots, the clean sparks, you know, the core scientifics. They were all Saluna once. And so people just need to have a look at what some of these smaller ones do because these smaller miners may be, if they get the right um uh decisions in place and the right investment and the right growth at the right time things can really turn around and we've seen that with some of the mining companies you know look at how what clean spark was two years ago i mean it had about two exahash now it's got 16 exahash and it's probably you know going to challenge core scientific and marathon this year this month sorry for for when we're looking at the total bitcoin mined um so things can change in a short space of time so, um, yeah, Saloon is definitely worth having a little bit more due diligence, have a read up of some of the things they've put out. Uh, they do put out a lot of information. They put presentations out. So, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's an interesting company. Yeah, what I really like about that business, we've covered them a few times, Anthony, is they really go out and look for stranded, renewable, smaller scale projects. And I do think, especially like we just talked about, as as the political landscape changes and then there, there's more pressure on the Bitcoin miners, I think there's going to be a real spot in the future for some of these small, uh, purpose-built, renewable kind of setups, as opposed to the big facilities we see from, from the main players there. Um, but yes, definitely worth a look, definitely worth a read, and congrats to the team. Now, speaking of big companies, Anthony, I know there was some news about Marathon as well, uh, so maybe we can tack that on the end, but MicroStrategy has become one of the bigger companies in the world now. I, I recall you were saying they were trading about 500 million market cap. Now they're up to about 30 billion, give or take. Now, we've been saying, Anthony, that we feel some of the pressure on the Bitcoin miners is due to people maybe uncertain about the halving. They're moving their money into either ETFs or MicroStrategy as the main proxy there. Obviously, Michael Saylor has really made a name for himself as the Bitcoin company in the world right now. But in terms of market cap, you and I were talking about this yesterday. They've got about 210,000 Bitcoin, so about 1% of the global supply that we'll ever have. Um, if you work that out, it works out to about $15 billion or so based on 70, 71,000 US. Now their market cap is about double that. So what's interesting to me is we see in the comments, Anthony, people saying, hey, you know what, the miners are underperforming. I'm moving my money to micro strategy, which really contradicts the buy low, sell high because you're now paying a 200% premium on micro strategies, Bitcoin. Um, whereas you could be getting the miners at depressed pricing with a constant fixed cost of production of Bitcoin. And yes, you have the halving, um, but they're doing a lot of things in terms of hash rate, efficiency, uh, power costs and contracts to really mitigate that, that impact. So Anthony, in your opinion, is MicroStrategy a buy right now? Or do you think this is just a, dis a distraction and, and things are getting a little bit uh, maybe inflated there? Um, I mean, it, I when people are buying into microstructure, they are effectively buying direct into Bitcoin. And it gives them, like the ETFs have done, it gives them another opportunity to do that as a direct correlation. I mean, microstructure, you're buying Bitcoin and, you know, they're holding it, end of. You know, it's in the treasury. They haven't sold any. They just started to accumulate over the last four years. And like you say, they've got well over 200,000 now. And every time BlackRock seems to get close, uh, Michael Saylor seems to go out and raise more funding to go and buy another chunk. So they're having a little bit of a, com a competition. But bear in mind, if you look at the graph on how Microsoft actually achieved that 210,000 and look at the graph of how BlackRock have achieved their 200,000, it was over a certainly different time frame. So, you know, that, that race is going to be over in a, in a, in a, in a few days time. So uh, make, make no bones about that. Um, but, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people move across uh, their investment from mining stocks and from other stocks into micro strategy in recent weeks. And we've seen that price, you know, uh, it was up something like, uh, you know, over a th well over a thousand percent literally over the last sort of 12 months. Um, so um, interesting times. I mean, at the moment, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's, I don't know, last time I looked, it was like $1,600 to $1,800 a, sh a share. So that might that price there might actually 
you know, start making people think is that, you know, is that too high? I mean, bear in mind, the market cap is probably twice the amount of the Bitcoin value that's held on there. But, you know, who's to say how much of the factor of the future of Bitcoin prices in that in, in that in that stock price? So, you know, we're seeing so many of these analysts come out and experts in the space to say that, you know, 68,000 is today isn't where Bitcoin is going to stop. So maybe some of that uh, future price actions built into their price there. We've not necessarily not necessarily seen the same in the mining stocks, um, but I think the mining stocks will start to follow the Bitcoin price. Uh, you know, if it starts tracking back upwards again, I think we're seeing even today, we're seeing some green shoots, even though the Bitcoin price has dropped in the last couple of days. It seems now people may be going back into miners thinking they're a, 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 a price to go and buy. So, you know, it's an interesting space. It, 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 it changes uh, daily. Um, sometimes you've got to have a little bit of patience uh, in the space and not be too dramatic because the, the volatility is there. Um, certainly is in the mining stocks. We've seen that some of these mining stocks are down 30, 40 percent since the start of the year, and the Bitcoin price we've already articulated is up, you know, over 60 percent, and we can't work out why. But when you look at 2023, some of these mining stocks really did catapult significantly higher than the Bitcoin price. So maybe there's a bit of profit taking back there. The ETFs have obviously been an impact. MicroStrategy, Coinbase. These are companies that um, are, you know, proxy investments directly for for Bitcoin, and people can buy these investments in their sort of like uh, tax-free investment accounts, as well as now the ETF op option as well. So there are lots of proxy investments out there uh, to compete with the mining stocks. So, but I think you know we'll see in the next few months that you know the mining stocks will start to uh, to if the Bitcoin price maintains where it is and goes higher, the, the mining stocks will follow. Well, and I'll tell you two things, Anthony. It sure does make a good for, uh, good point or case for hodling, right? And we've we've seen a lot of the Bitcoin miners kind of have different opinions on should we sell daily, should we hodl. Um, based on what the market is telling us here, investors really like companies that have Bitcoin on their balance sheet, as we're seeing with MicroStrategy outperforming the miners. Um, the other thing that's really interesting, I saw the other day, MicroStrategy market cap in a single trading session went up more than the entire market cap of CleanSpark. Um, if I was Michael Saylor, it, it doesn't take too long or too many more price increases on Bitcoin to start thinking, hey, maybe we just buy one of these miners and instead of actually purchasing Bitcoin off the open market at all time highs, we can just produce it in house. Um, so who knows, again, what will happen in this space, but uh, yeah, definitely some moves being made. Now, Anthony, we only have a couple minutes here, but uh, we did want to throw in Marathon as well. I know you you saw there's some news there, so I'll kick it back to you for Marathon closing thoughts, and then we can wrap up. Yeah, so, um, so Marathon, uh, we know they purchased a couple of sites uh, last month in Texas, and they've gone ahead and now purchased um, another site from Applied Digital, um, they're going through the process now to purchase a 200 megawatt site uh, for uh, $87.3 million. The deal itself is expected to close uh, in quarter two, and that will release you know, further 12 million restricted cash that's been pledged as collateral. So, you know, we've seen Marathon Digital now sort of like literally turn 180 degrees now from that asset light model realizing that um you know control is 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 important for some of these mining companies to have over their um especially when you're the size of marathon you know they are you know i think 28 exa hash the they're the biggest north american miner by hash rate and by by market capitalization but what you got to remember is the last couple of years um their um their their asset light model has has posed a few challenges for their production and you know in the last sort of 15 months we've seen probably a couple of months where they had really good performances but the rest of them have, have literally been you know poor in comparison to some of their peer miners and you know we, we we go back to that you know hosted versus you know having our own facilities and um yeah it looks like fred and and and, and the team at marathon are now looking to sort of like move into an infrastructure um which literally you know, certainly most of all the big miners. There are a couple of other smaller miners that use uh, ho hosted uh, as as a way, but they're, they're quite small small miners, and, and and it's manageable maybe that level. But when you've got twenty eight x ash in probably ten different, eleven different sites, um, it's real. It's a real challenge, and we've talked about this many times there. So, I suppose you know when they they get to that part where they where they've fully got control of infrastructure, 
they're growing um, they you know they want to achieve 50 exahash and onwards in the next year or so so I think they're setting that up now looking at sites they've certainly got the balance sheet to do it they've got over a billion dollars in treasury so cash and bitcoin they've also got a one and a half billion at the market offering so you know we had a lot of uh, we had an update um, before the Ben podcast where Bit, Bit Farms had gone out and got 375 million and people were up in arms because they were having to dilute some shares to grow. And Marathon had got one and a half billion ATM in place. And, you know, Riots, I think 750 million, Clean Spot, 750 million. These miners are needing this to sort of like, you know, they realize it's probably the best way to grow in the current financial climate. And so, you know, uh, Marathon can grow as quickly as they can you know they can find these sites build you know build them up you know buy machines get to that target and then hopefully we'll see their production in line of where it is but if you think about december 1847 i think they mined in december and it was 883 in february um and even core scientific who have significantly less hash rate mined you know significantly more bitcoin they were they were closer to 900 bitcoin for the month so it's going to be an interesting race in March to see if Marathon can gather some ground again or whether the likes of Clean Spark, who've now got 16 x actions today, and they're having, from what I can gather, a good month up to now. So I'm looking forward to the March numbers coming out because it could be a three-horse a three horse race here. Um, and then we know that other miners are going to get to that level um, of hash rate by the middle of the year and towards the end of the year. So it's going to be sort of like five or six miners in that sort of like what we like to class as the, as the top tier uh, tier group um but yeah so a, a, a not uh totally surprising update from marathon we know having bought two sites they were starting to look at infrastructures the way forward this is another site now and they've got certainly got more funds to buy you know sites as they become available and within that investment uh, criteria that they have yeah it, it's uh interesting to see that pivot from uh from the asset light to the vertical integration and again a great example of how things can change here Anthony, no shortage of news. A great way to end the week here. If you guys are still watching, hopefully you enjoyed. Hit the like button, you guys. Big help to myself, Anthony, and the channel. If you're not subscribed, McNally Money, we're on the way to 43,000. We'd love to have you as part of the community. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you think the tax is going to go in? Are you buying micro strategy? What do you think about vertically integrated versus asset light? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Anthony, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you Monday, buddy.